Your man Bender World, and I am giving you the Murder Inc. Q and A, the third episode, ladies and gentlemen. So we're on the third episode of the Murder Inc. documentary on BET, and uh, you never know, man. We might have a special guest today. Yo, Chris, what's good? Yeah, I'm on, man. You had me waiting. I thought you was coming on earlier. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just trying to get everything ready and get the titles and all that going. How you feeling? I'm blessed, man. You know, here. Yeah. I'm working. I stay working. I'm at the crib just working, just chilling out working. Man. And I got a, uh, I got some other things I'm putting together with uh, my man Saint from okay. Inter Interscope Records. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Saint. So we getting together to put some shit together too. Well, look, man, I, I didn't want to tell everybody, but what we're going to do right now is I'm going to bring the director of the murder story, Q, you know what I'm saying? The, the like director that. of the murder story. You, you can introduce him, but let me, let me get bro in here. We all on different. There you go. <laughs> what up, what up? Happening? Finally. I'm Finally. in here. <laughs> Tarek, what up? Yo, What's good with y'all? Oh, man. We good, we good, man. So, Chris, well, I want you to introduce him, man, because it's a very interesting story about how the Murder, Inc. documentary came about. There was yeah. an unofficial documentary, which he did, and you guys discovered on YouTube. But I just want you to talk a little bit about, you know, meeting him, and we'll go from there. T. Dot, what up? You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about me, Michael. I shout out a lot of the people where they be on my live and shit. All good. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tarek was on the line. You know Tarek from Murder, Inc. I just seen him. Yeah. But this is Michael J. Payton, uh, yeah. Oakland's finest. <laughs> 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 they stand up. You know, so Michael J. Payton um, was, is the director of the official documentary, but he, what he did, uh, Bender, was he made an unofficial documentary that I got eyes on and got to watch that I thought was so well put together from an independent standpoint without physically knowing us, which means he did a ton of background information, researching to really do a, a real like field documentary. And right. uh, we actually met through the Instagram, you know, and uh, Irv got him and then we all, you know, I told Irv, yeah, see it. and he's like, yeah, and I said, this shit is fire. He agreed. And then we ended up meeting him, Michael J. Payton and bringing him into New York, going through everything, and then gave him this opportunity to do the official documentary, which is dope. And that's what this is all about. This is about giving people opportunities. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we do. Man, this is really interesting about the story, Michael. Um, I kind of received the news during your mom's passing. Like, my condolences on that. And I, I when I first talked to you earlier, I said, man, it was a, a a gift from mom. She shot you the alley oop. Uh, something she was passionate about. Tell us what made you decide to do the Murder Inc. story. Well, man. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. And uh, man, it's a blessing sure. to be here, right? Uh, what we'll, we'll started off. I, I got. I was telling you earlier. I was an artist starting off okay. in the game. I've been an artist since I was, you know, about 11, 12 years old. But what got me in the game was Murder Inc. Records. That first. Irv Gotti presents uh, the Ink album that came out 2002. Right. That did it for me. Like I always been a fan of hip hop, but that made me want to be in the business. And so ever since then, you know, I, I, you know, I started my journey into the music business. I became a rapper, a producer, and uh, eventually I moved into the film space. And um, so it was no good as a rapper. Like, oh no, no, I'm nice. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. I'm nice, right? <laughs> I ain't gonna drop no bars today. Did you today, say, but you I'm say nice. I'm not with this rapping shit? Let me pack it up. Or was <laughs> videos like wow. Nah, so the, for the rap, I mean, I was just, you know, I, I, I'm the type of person that if I can't, if I'm not gonna change the narrative, narrative, I'm not, if I'm not gonna break through, I'm not, I'm not interested in it. I don't want it to be one of a million. I want to be one in a million. And I felt like rap and hip hop was getting into a space where. You know, I grew up on, you know, East Coast, you know, Nas, J, you know, Ja, X. Like, that was my type of, of of music, even though I was from the West Coast, born and raised in Oakland. But that was the type of music I gravitated to. And I noticed that the game was just getting a lot more goofy. You know, the things that you had to do to get on was just a lot more. I was like, I, this ain't really me. I, I'll tell you a little backstory. <laughs> I was just frustrated with the game. I was like, yo, man, I'm making all these conscious songs and nobody cares. 
I'm gonna make a twerk record. So I made a record that uh, <laughs> that 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 I was Not like, it wasn't that. me at all. But I but I made a record and it got it was called Minimal. Y'all can look it up if you want to. Please don't tag me in it. Um, but I made it, <laughs> put it out. It started getting airplay on the radio, video spin. It was crazy. And I was like, okay, I'm finally making it somewhere. But one day I was on Instagram. That's when Instagram first started getting popping and popping. And some young, she had to be no more than 13, 14 years old. A young lady was had made a video to my record, twerking on a handstand. I said, you know what? This shit ain't for me no more, man. This ain't what I'm trying to put out there. In the <laughs> so I'm like, let me let me stick on this on this film and the, on this film thing because I was I was you know being a, a, an artist, I was one of those guys who did it all. I, you know, from producing the records, mixing the master record, all all the way to shooting my own video. So that's how I got into the film and the film space was shooting my video, shooting videos for other artists, and then I've always been a student of history and a student of hip hop. So I always love to be able to tell hip-hop story so that, that's how we got to doing the the unauthorized murder ink story i was like let me bring it full circle with my my video uh editing and filmmaking skills to tell this story about um murder ink just because i thought it was an interesting and dope story that nobody was really telling the right way so i'm like yo let me let me be the one and th this this will definitely make me stand out <laughs> you know yeah. and, uh, but let me, let me toss home. it over let me toss it over to chris since we're up to episode three this is the Ashanti episode. Like everybody waiting for this. Like, I couldn't even ask the questions if to the fucking because everybody asked Ashanti. So what stood out most to you about this episode? Ben, ben uh, Michael, you hear Ben clearly or no? He kind of was breaking up a little bit. Exactly. Oh. So you keep what? telling me it's me, but it's you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you on the Android? <laughs> is that better? Go ahead, say it. I think it's better, yeah. Okay, for sure. I had the phone up too loud. So um, I kept blaming it on Chris. So since this is the third part of the season and the, the episode that touched Conti the most, Chris, what stood out to you the most about this episode besides the obvious? Like what? Again, it's, you know, it's Irv telling his truths. Okay. It's his truths and really opening up about his real relationship and how he felt with Ashanti, you know what I'm saying? Which I can sit here and verify and testify like he really loved Ashanti and vice versa. It was a real relationship that wasn't just a little one, two, it was a long time. And then when you add in that spice, which the spice is the music and the success of the music is very combustible. And then, you know, the only, you know, Irv was out. Being Irv, he also, even though I say he really loved it, because men, as men, we say we love someone and we still hurt them. Meaning we was out, Irv was out cheating. He was out, he wasn't just being faithful to her. And that's one of her biggest complaints was, um, you know, he's making me look crazy because she's now becoming this big star and they're dating and everything. And he's out with all these other bitches, fucking bitches. And, and that was a part that she was really feeling like, damn, why is he doing that? Going yeah. back and forth. And I, and I could speak very openly because I was really a therapist. Right. Like, going back and forth from one hotel to the other, from speaking to her to speaking to It's a video. I, I, I'm bad with names. And Shanti did a video right. with a guy in a bathtub, and she was, like, killing him, and he was cheating on it. I was her boy. She wanted right. me to play the love interest because I looked at her. I'm gonna keep it. That's a dead true story. Like she wanted me to be play that character. And I was like, "Are you crazy? Like, what's wrong with you?" <laughs> this shit gonna start a fist fight. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, I mean, why do you think that Ashanti doesn't want to speak? Like her speaks, like you say, he speaks truth. That she's been through a lot, and she did speak. She did speak earlier. She's right. moved on. And and there's nothing wrong with someone saying I moved on. I don't want to relive or retalk about it anymore. Mind you, she did an Angie. I think her last with Angie Martinez, but not too long ago. But I don't believe she do those interviews at the moment. Right. I mean, you know, like Angie, you gotta speak to her. Now let me toss it over to Mike. Um, out of the five part, you know, the five part series by you having a deeper look and that's with the person, you know, 
horse's mouth. What did you learn about the internet you never knew? And Chris, for the last three, almost going on four years, that I've been getting all these stories firsthand. You know, so by the time we got to the camera and we got ready to sit down and do these interviews, I was already baked in, right? I already knew the story through and through both sides. This is a real family. Like, this is a real, like, murder ring. It's, it's not, like, it's not bullshit. It's not just hyperbole. It's a real family atmosphere. Everybody is, you know, locked in with one another. And, and I tell you, these guys, you know, it's a lot of folks in the, in the media and a lot of folks who like to talk. And these guys tell the truth. They, they are very open. If you talk to Chris and Irv, they're very open and honest about their truth. And they're going to tell you exactly how they feel, hard on the sleeve, whether it's politically correct or not. You know, right. and that's that's the you know that's probably the biggest takeaway um, uh, from this whole thing is that you know whether or not people want to agree with every single word that's being said, the truth is that my job as a director is just to put the camera on these guys, let them just tell their truth. I think I was disappointed about was that we weren't able to get a Shanti side of the story, you know, because it does come across sometimes as one sided. We're only hearing one side of the story. At the same time, I respect uh, Ashanti's. Uh, uh, choice to not participate because, like Chris said, she's moved on. And it's why relive some of the stuff if if it's not necessary. Why rehash all these things? You see the headlines and stuff that's coming out of it just from us talking about it. So, you know. But at the same time, you also got to respect Herb, Chris, Murder Inc, and everybody else for telling their truth and wanting the truth to be out to the world. So, out of all the people in uh, in, in this hip hop culture, you know, Murder Inc is real. Murder Inc. You know, <laughs> you know? That's a fact. And you know when when you say that you know one of the one of my Saturday emerging when she got her star, you know I, there's no way Irv shouldn't have been standing with her. Like it just takes away from the historical time that was generated and created by my brother and her and, and the whole team of Murder Inc. and what, what what came about. And here she's getting these flowers and doesn't talk about Murder, the world knows Murder Inc. You know she. Irv in the world, like it's like it's a story when she goes up point, you know, just on his shows and her never saying it's murder or saying it's murder again. It, everyone knows it's murder, it's like it's only like what you're doing, it's not adding a value. And me and her had these conversations before, and I was saying, I get. You know, there's been a lot of things said about it. And again, I fuck with Ashanti. Like when, when Mike says his family, she's still family. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and she and knows that the proof, the proof is the verses. The verses when uh, Nelly came over, I stepped right in the middle. <laughs> I'm going to let Nelly come up with the fish, no matter what. Fucking with him because she wasn't fucking with him at all. And ironically, after verses, now they're all on tour together. So when when people talk about there's a problem, I've been part of way way stronger beef than relationship breakup, and people make amends and fix things for the overall betterment of everything. And I, you know, Irvis told me he don't want to talk about it no more. He would love to talk her if she wanted a movie, a TV show, but she'll never believe that it's true because of things that go on thousand percent but you know she'll never believe it she won't trust him to uh allow that to her again and i understand i've spoken to her mother I've spoken to a lawyer you know they're all this is all family. all of them they know we get it we get any rally audio on you but why but that's what i'm getting dealing with fucking uh instagram we should be on class Live and we wouldn't have these issues. <laughs> right. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. You change from being, you know, people know you the director of the Murder Inc. documentary on BET. Like that got to be interesting for women. The naysayers, your family. Like, you know what? Tell me about it. Oh man, I got so many cousins that. Um, <laughs> no, nah, real. Like, you hear people say that all the time. You think it's cliche. And you think it's like, nah, it's no bullshit. Like, I really got so many friends and people that I, that never. Fuck with me before that now or like you know but but now nah, it's all love no it's, it's it's all it's been great man like it's definitely gotten a lot of recognition um it's definitely been a, a, a honor and a blessing to be able to 
be able to tell the story. It's also a lot of responsibility. You get a lot of you get a lot of the love. Sometimes you get a little bit of hate because you are, you know, it's being seen through through your lens, right? So people are, you know, well, why wasn't Ashanti here? Why wasn't why didn't you like but you gotta appreciate the the space that that, you know, Irv and Chris has given me to tell this story. And, you know, it, it's been remarkable, man. It's been truly remarkable and life changing and you know, I'm just honored as somebody who is a who is a real hip hop fan. I'm mean, I'm a real hip hop guy to be able to tell this story is like, yo, like this is this is crazy. It's like somebody has to pinch me and shit. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm 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 beyond grateful. I'm gonna be honest too, man. Like I was such a big Murder Inc. fan in high school, nigga. I went and bought me a leather bucket hat, right, and some leather pants from Wilson's. You know, I really didn't have no money, so I got my leather pants from Wilson's and I had to get them shits altered. But it's just like, you know, Ja had the Burberry bucket, right? And yeah. I couldn't afford Burberry, but I just had my hat and I flipped my shit up, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, another crazy story is, I think Ja Rule came to eat uh, the click. I don't even think it was called E2 in Chicago one night. It was this big club. He came in there, he had the headband on, he had half his fucking hair braided up. I say, this nigga, yeah, you know what's crazy about the, the hair? The hair is that when you, when you, and I don't know if we got a chance to even get all the way into it because when you're doing 40 minutes of TV, it's just hard to compact all that stuff in there. But one of the reasons that Ja, you know, grew out his hair because he was bald at first, uh, but people were comparing him to X mm -hmm. a lot. And it was like the X comparison because the voice mm -hmm. and all that. And so he was, he really struggled with trying to find a way to define himself. That's why he went with the girl sound, with the sound where he was more catering to women. He went, he grew his hair out. Like, I'm gonna braid my hair. X guy is bald. I'm gonna braid my hair up. And so you just all, you know, mm -hmm. throughout this process, I guess I'll say that to go back to your original, your earlier question uh, about what I learned. You just really see how Ja is, is continuously thinking and working on how to get himself out of the shadows of J and X, right? He's always right. seen as like the little brother. And, and even, even Jay confirmed that when I spoke to him for the doc. He was like, yeah, Ja was like the guy who was just happy to be there. We wasn't really taking him like he was like, no, you know, no, nobody, like n no disrespect to him. But it was just, we, you know, we was the two dogs. And Ja was always constantly fighting to get in that slot and just to see how he maneuvered and was genius enough to know how to separate himself musically, artistically, visually. That's, that's just that just tells you how much of a genius he is and, and you know, continues to be to this day. Ja who carried Murder Inc. man on his back in a way that like, like, like Chris always says in true rule fashion. Like I went and listened recently because of the interviews I'm doing with you guys. It like to DMX video and just like yo, this nigga's my hype man. It rest in peace to X. Like no, you know I'm not I'm not bringing up no bad blood, but like X was really talking his shit. But Ja didn't bag down, and even with the fifty shit, I felt like he should have responded sooner. Because I felt like the smart thing that 50 did was utilize the thingy musical pocket. It's like, damn, you're talking shit about him, but you're using this melodic singy pocket. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I see where this is going. But, you know, he, John never really just jumped off the porch right away. He was in the mode. I would have attacked his ass. I wouldn't have waited. I just you know, that was all destruction. It was designed. Irv was saying, don't do it, don't do it. And, you know, you can't silence young Malcolm but so long. And then, <laughs> you had to let him go. And everyone says now when he went, it was the wrong time. So right. damn if you do, damn if you don't. It's still God's work. Right. And, 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 it is, is what it is. And it was such a different time in music. You know, like at the time, it so, was like, it took, I mean, I can imagine, I wasn't there, but I can imagine it took, you know, I mean, at the time, Murder, Inc. was so big. Job was so big. That's like, could you imagine like, Michael Jackson responded to some like kid who's like a singer on the street corner. Like, no, like he's, he's Ja, this guy was here, you know what I'm saying? So, and it just, the, the, the industry wasn't like that at the time. It wasn't as interconnected with the streets and the tweets today as it is, as it was, you know, back right. then, everything was really like, yo, their industry, this is the streets we're, we, you know, we made it. Like if I'm not responding to some dude from 
the block. Like, why would I do that? But and you know, you know what? I think that's a great PR move in certain situations. I just think for the sport of hip hop, like you know, anytime somebody say something, people want people to respond. You know what I'm saying? And like even with Job ja becoming an artist that was outselling Jay Z and outselling DMX, man, that's huge. Like that's the biggest flex. Like what the fuck? What else do you need him to say? And at that point, it was nothing really to say. So I could understand where he was coming back, you know, with that with that point of view. Chris, when y'all were working on the Ashanti records, because we seen her get her first show at like Madison Square Garden, and she was nervous with the butterflies. Oh, uh, she it just all came full circle. She knew that moment would come. For any artist, come on, that's a surreal moment. You've dreamed about it since she was a kid. She just think she had three deals. Let's keep it a buck. She probably was almost ready to give up, probably, when we got her. You know what I'm saying? Thinking it's not going to happen. Then all of a sudden, it does happen. It's like, wow. It's so it's a real moment just for herself. Again, I'm speaking for her, but to me, I know she was in a place. Chris, we probably getting the phone call. Y'all yeah. <laughs> That was a sign of saying, stop talking about me, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Yes, she was in a place that was surreal, man. It was like, wow, mm -hmm. my dreams are really coming true. And then, you know, Irv said he opened up to, and then she felt that confidence, you know, as a performer, as an artist. I'm not a performer, but I perform in the sense I do shows, I do my events, and I had to walk in the outside and, and being on the stage. Now, I could only imagine what it's like when you got tens of thousands of people. You know what I mean? And, and that sure. energy that you're dealing with. And, and, and again, it takes every artist to get used to it. When I dealt with fighters, they would walk through that to get to that ring. They all go through it. And it's how you handle it is who make it, it, uh, once you go through it, that actually makes you who you become and who you are. So this is my next question to you. Who sold the most records, Ja Rule or Ashanti? Oh, that's easy, Ja Rule. You know what's crazy? So my lady fans, right? They've been on my ass, your ass, Irv Gotti's ass, everybody's ass. Like, and, and listen, it's no diss when we say that. I know Ashanti is an amazing artist. Um, I loved her tone, just that pretty spirit. Like Irv said, he wants to make her the princess of R and B, like like Mary J. Flash. And I feel like what he did with her, it was never her because it's like, okay, yeah, Mary was one way, but the records that so me working with artists, even as a, a songwriter, you know, sometimes you hear people be like, don't be so singy, right? Just kind of like hum it out a little bit, like give it a bop, be a little lazy, a little more of this. And I mean, that kind of changed the whole sound for everybody. And like that, Murder Inc. made a sound like hands down, nobody can dispute the fucking sound. And it's like, I don't I don't know if that'll ever be done. It's something that you wanted to accomplish that maybe you didn't accomplish with Murder Inc. Man, I would have loved to have more artists. Um, number one, we never got the true opportunity to let the world get to our other artists and see what they have the world mm -hmm. from a music standpoint. You know, that was something that I really thought we didn't get to, you know, hone in on really. Because technically, you know, we have Jai, we have Shanti, and we have Lord, right? Those are successful artists in the sense of they have projects that we doing they did well. So, end of the day, that's what we. That's one of the opportunities. I wish, I wish Black Child would have got a chance. That 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 dude so raw, different. His style of rhyme and everything is like to me. He could have created. Shout out, Black Caddy. You know, uh, Charlie Baltimore. I mean, I wish they would have had a real opportunity finished. And again, when I received, seen the documentary, and Michael, you could jump in on this one because, right. like Vita, Vita was saying that she didn't get the opportunity. I could disagree. I hear them, but I do disagree because they all had their opportunities. And then, yes, they right. didn't want that window. So, uh, Vita's problem was she didn't write all her music. Okay. And she would take, and then uh, Hype Williams is who brought us Vita. And okay. Hype Williams owned basically her publishing. See, these okay. are the, hey, Mike, these are the backstories, bro. Yeah, backstories. Okay. Backstories. Back Irvin Hype, like, Irvin 
is, you know, that's family. The hype is family. Hype Williams, we was with from the beginning of his career. Like, so we're family. And he says, I want you to sign Vita, Irv. And he's like, I'm going to make incredible videos for her, blah, 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 blah. Irv said, cool. But her problem was she didn't write. When Hype realized the business and he owns the publishing because he got her signed and she doesn't write, he's not going to get the pub. He didn't want no one else to write it for her. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. that's her production down, which means now when we're in this window and you're on the Put It On Me, a huge number one record. You're on Down Ass Bitch, a huge number one record. And you don't have your music ready to follow. You right. miss your window. Yeah. And that's okay. With Charlie Baltimore, Irv was ready to release her music. And she was like, wait a minute, Irv, I don't like these records. Right. She's cold feet. But the window right. is wide open, right, with this number one record you're on. Same with Caddy. Okay, they wanted more, more, more. Caddy, we spent well into over a million dollars. He had his, he had a little ringtone type song that did really well, and we was what? Then we had him. He was all lined up, but then he started getting believing. He started believing a few other things that shouldn't have been believed, and then he started questioning things. See, no one could ever say why Ja was successful. Ja never questioned Irv in the moves Irv made from a business standpoint. Right. Auntie never questioned Irv in the moves he made and the songs he released from a business standpoint. They just gave him complete faith. Lloyd started that way, then questioned And that's why his career can maybe move the same way. You know, that chemistry is everything. And I can honestly even say that. You know, they didn't give him the full co control. People always sit there and say, but, you know, when someone is really the maestro, you got to let them be the maestro. So okay, with with and that's something that came up in the part three of the of the um, story. A lot of the artists felt that because of her relationship with Ashanti, they shit was pushed to the shot. So do do you feel like they they artists fell to the wayside? Hey Denise, what's going on? I'm gonna say something to to Michael because he knows Irv now from his own experience, so he could tie it together. Right. Does Irv like money or not? Irv <laughs> loves money. <laughs> no, you know, very important to understand. Yeah. So when when I say that, breaking a new artist is making money. Okay. That's the longevity of the money because when, that's the most valuable part of a uh, of record label and an artist is when you break that new artist because now they have X amount of years to generate revenue. Right. To business. Irv understands that to the highest level. For sure. And okay. I mean, that's something that's that said, when, when, when they say that, right, Irv was willing to uh, ab abuse Ja Rule relationship-wise, Ashanti relationship-wise, musically I'm talking about, to create another star. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's what the whole goal is. Now, when you get to the backstories, Michael, I'm telling you, this backstory <laughs> is so real. Yeah. Because this is the crux of what it is. And he can't tell the story in 40 minutes. Right, for sure. For okay, sure. so back story to what I'm saying is, when we have a job ja Rule record that goes number one, there's certain things that happen behind. Okay. We're, number one, we're in all these radio stations, okay? Irv is a radio whore. He's, what, I, what that means is he's <laughs> taking rule and saying, you got a radio show to do. We'll come and do that show. How much does y'all normally get? A hundred? All right, we're going to do it for 25. So they're saving that much money. They would have paid the whole number. So for that... The 75 back in pro, all right? Like they told listen you... To me. No, no, no. Yeah, listen to me. It's in favor. Uh -huh. Gotcha. That comes in favor. So now if I have a, a, a Ja Rule record, right, that's number one, and I do those shows for nothing, I could dictate who I want to play on radio. Caddy, <laughs> Black Chat, Smart. Okay. This is business one-on-one -on -one in music, I promise you. This is nothing special. Right. Okay. Def Jam, our partner, who was really our fucking crutch, uh, crippling us on so many levels, when I watched Leo again, was taking our favors for, let's say, a Ludacris, for, let's say, uh, Nelly. Oh. Instead of us getting the favor, right? Because they're the ones, they're our parent company. They're taking the favor for their artists. So I could make claims on all of these artists that came after Murder Inc. in Universal. Okay. 
and that's, that's the way, real. Story. Got to, everybody don't understand that though. So like, I understand it because I'm in music. So it's the equivalent of me being like a Rockefeller artist, Kanye having budget money left over or something, and me utilizing that. So yeah. Murphy Inc. gave people plays and discounts and show love to be able to come back and do things. But Murder Inc. didn't receive the fucking the favor. They didn't receive the favor. Universal um, took the favor and that is why we couldn't break a caddy, or couldn't break a, a Charlie, or couldn't break a, a black child. You understand? That was the reality. They wasn't giving us our, all our favors for the favors. We're doing the label. They took them from us. Wow. But I, I want if I can, I want to speak to something a little more generally about the the topic of you know did people get left behind because of Shanti or because of Ja or whatever. I mean, I think you know in general, was there? Listen, like like Irv, like, like Chris said, Irv loves money, right? right. And he smell money, he gonna go after it. You know what I mean? Like if he smells money, if he <laughs> sees something, Irv said that if, if the record wasn't going platinum or triple platinum, he didn't want it. Right. You know what I mean? So like. It, it really speaks to what how much do you want it how much do you want it as the artist how right. much and I, again i i say that with a little bit of a caveat because i know that the, the the industry of yesteryear is totally different from the industry of today right with meaning that there's not we didn't have the social media and the ability to put out music and content the way that artists are today but i think just generally speaking to creatives out there because i know a lot of creators are probably watching you got to put in the work man you can't yeah. you can't wait for somebody to hold your hand. I don't care if it's the boss of the label, the boss of the company. Who you can't wait for somebody to give you anything. They, the fact that you have a jersey on, that Murder Inc. jersey, a Rockefeller jersey, that's that's enough. You know what you can do with that? You know what you right. can do with that jersey? You know what you can do with that calling card? Go out there and work. Go out there and make it. Go out there and make it happen. Go out there and make it. So don't you can't sit back and blame. Oh well, this thing and this thing. And I'm not again. I'm not saying this about anybody in particular. But everybody but, all blames their label though michael so what you're saying is some good shit like 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 i don't know who said that they was like if everything is going good it's the artist's fault you know what i'm saying right if everything's going fucked up it's the label's fault it's who's fault right oh. right no 100 you know, and it's just a matter always put the mirror up and make people look in the mirror again and i'm gonna sit there shanti worked her ass off lloyd even lloyd let's go to lloyd yeah. lloyd came with all this fucking music. Irv didn't have to make all the music. It was already done. We was like, we got hits from Lloyd. Irv just put his little magic touches on shit. Made a few records, but Lloyd came packaged. Even when Irv. even when even when shit got thick, right? And and the ink had to take a little backseat because of the case, Lloyd went out there and worked his own record. He worked you. He right. was working on the streets and brought it back to Irv said, Irv, okay, here you go. Now let's let's put the real battery behind it. So that, that's and that's fire. that's the, that's Shut the type of energy. The monster, man. I love no, that's, that's what it's supposed to be. And that's one thing. You, and when you learn about working with Herb and working around Herb is that, again, Herb is, is, is always looking for the next, you know what I mean, the next cash out. You know what I mean? So Herb may get distracted with this and that. That doesn't mean you stop working. That doesn't mean you stop going, coming and putting in the reps. You don't do that. You still got to keep putting in the work and, and make, make them pay attention to you. You know, you know what, what I'm he, saying? Make like, make the label you, whoever pay attention to you. Let me show y'all what Herb would do to me. When I first brought him a Shanti to let him hear it, he went like this. Look. <laughs> <laughs> and I know as soon as he did this, I know what he's talking about. Tunnel vision. That's like the horses. They put blinkers on the horses so they can't see nothing. They only can see what's in front of them. Right. And Herb said, I make money with Ja Rule, nigga. What are you talking about? <laughs> so that's what he was. Right. So when you say like all these other things, he has Ja Rule, he has Ashanti, he has Lloyd moving. He is focused on how to take them to these levels. Not saying he's not thinking about them, but that means you may have to put in a little bit more energy and effort in your own business to get his attention so he could really push in. But when right. he did push in, in his defense, because he did. Not one of them was ready. I, hmm. Not yeah. one of them was ready to say, yo, go with that record. Fuck it. Every one of them got cold feet. So yeah. again, that window closed. Now I got to build them all the way back up again. And they don't understand that from an executive standpoint. Because as an artist, they think it's just one, two, three. Oh, just put me on and I'm on. That's it. It's so, 
But how do y'all balance that shit, yo? Like, how can Irv be a producer, producer, cultivating a sound and be your be your executive? I don't your executive. I don't think it's a conflict of interest. I just think it's too much to put on one person. It's well, like he, LA he, Reed is putting your said, album out like he's producing he's your album. Person, but he had a whole team. Me being the biggest part of the team, putting all of these producers together. You understand? That was what I did. Running the company so he don't have to think about other parts of the business. He could only be on the creative side of things. That's what right. I did. So it was, It's again, he may not say it, but it's all right. That's because in his world, he did it all. But I signed every check. This, right. this, this next uh, episode, episode four on BET, make sure y'all go check it out, nine o'clock. It's going to be about the trial. Mm -hmm. I have not seen it yet. Michael knows more than me. Okay. <laughs> I have not seen it. And I, if it's about the trial, there's no way Irv could tell me about it. No, definitely. Mm -hmm. Properly. Properly. There's not a chance in hell he could tell the story. He was not present at those behind the scenes building up to the trial. He was there every day for the trial because you have to be there. But all the other days, he was not there. I was there. No, Chris, then, you, I can you know, definitely confirm and, that you are you are definitely the, the backbone of that story because you have so much information, especially being there at the pre-trials, being there and all the entry. Like, you yeah, like you, you were able to really – I mean, it's almost like we was watching, like, court TV or something, you know what I mean, in the editing room. Like, you really laid it out, like, like, like yeah. very, very thoroughly. That's for yeah, sure. Thank you. In the I, day, so when you the trial, guys, like – I mean, that, that's a tough time, but I actually don't want to get too much into the trial since it's the next episode. I'm going to stay off of the trial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's I don't want to. Right there. Me, yo, Bender, don't be talking about next week's shit this week. So, I mean, he's a busy guy, but I see what you see from the family vibe. Like, he, Tr Chris is really fair about making sure everybody eats. He's really fair about making sure everybody gets the credit. So, I mean, I've never heard bad business done on the Murder, Inc.'s name. Like, I really don't hear, you know, disgruntled artists over there. How do you keep that shit together, man? Is it just because you solid or you're... Transparency. I had to learn legal uh, jargon in music, right? I had to learn the music industry business. And then when I deal with an artist, I would break it down to them, explain to them why, so they understood. I would do that with every producer, and then they understand. Now, listen... Uh, producers tried to sue us, and I would tell them they're wasting their time. Right. And then they realized after they got a lawyer and spent money and wasted a bunch of money that I was telling the truth, and they came back to me and apologized. Even Chink sued us, and Chink's still with us to this day. <laughs> he sued you and he came back? Then he, he tried to sue. There's nothing to sue for. He thought there was more money there, and I'm like, you got 50%. I made sure you got that from the door. That's it. And I explained this to you, and he thought it was wrong. He thought it was something else missing. So You're not so getting more. Explain that a little more in detail. I could have gave, listen to me, I could have gave producers like Puffy, and, and I'm not trying to knock Puffy and all these other guys. They paid him a flat fee. Earth could have owned everything 100%. I could have did that. Then they could have cried. Then they could have came to me and cried and said something, and I was like, damn, they right. Maybe throw them a dollar or two back. I ain't gonna lie, that would have been the deal I would have gave niggas. Like, I don't know. Like, no, but then I understand. You know, I did those deals. Again, I did them all. That lets you know, Irv was more than fair with every producer, every artist. And we would go and fight for our artists. So, we're, I don't believe there's another label in the history right there that you could go to. The label that would fight and argue and negotiate the artist's record deals. That's how much trust they had in me and my brother to do so. We would argue with Def Jam, our parent company, for the deals with Universal to do all of their recording contracts. You know what these guys would tell us? Fuck them. <laughs> no bullshit. Just right. like that. Fuck Ja Rule. Fuck Ashanti. Don't give them the deal you talking about and watch them come back and take the shit we give them. That's the way labels look at artists. But see, watch this, though, Chris. Now, that's, it's crazy that you bring that up. I hope it's a lot of music people on the live right now. The comments is busting. My shit freezing up. There's so much shit coming through. Yeah. My, 
going yaka, 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 right? <laughs> but, like, why do artists always think it's so much more in the pot than it is? Like, they don't want to do the business, and then they get mad at those that choose to take the time out and the knowledge. And and, and listen, it's a hard space. I know what it's I'm like to you. But they don't know that the label is telling you they need to get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to appreciate reality, too. Lawyers, they're the biggest problem. Lawyers is the fuck up? It's the biggest problem in music. One of the, one of the biggest problems in the music industry is in turn, attorneys. I got beef with all attorneys except my attorney, Brian Williams. I mean, Brian Robinson. Shout out, Brian. He's a monster. And he understands what I mean when I say this. See, they're the ones that are supposed to educate what the label is doing to the artist. So every time there's a deal and you hear an artist saying they didn't get treated properly, Go back to the attorney. Where was that nigga at? Where was she at? <laughs> right. You, deal. No one signed a deal with a record label without an attorney or representation because it would null and void the deal. And oh, yeah, yeah, that, now, that's good to know. If you do a deal, right, and it's just y'all. Okay, now, look, a lawyer has to be present to explain that deal to make the deal contractually legal and binding. That's one of the parts that makes it binding. Exchange of something is the next part. So they usually pay you. As soon as you sign, here's a check. You accepted that check? That means you accepted that deal. Offer and acceptance. That's the part of legal that you have to understand. Right. So right. so what, what I'm telling you is every artist that you hear complain, at that moment when they signed the deal, they thought it was a good deal. That's why they fucking signed it. So look in the mirror, motherfuckers, and stop complaining about labels. <laughs> right? And I'm I'm the number one against labels, so don't get it fucked up. I want to destroy every Universal, Warner Brothers, Sony. They should not exist anymore. So I'm very clear in my opinion here. But the reality of what I'm saying is you signed the deal knowing what you was getting or you didn't give a fuck, and then all of a sudden you do better, and then you don't go back to the label to switch it up. And that's what every artist is supposed to do. You got to have the big balls. You got to have the fucking fortitude to go back to the label say I'm no longer that little dude I'm this dude cut me my deal change my deal or I'm not moving but like labels do look what I said John is hype fuck Shut Ja Rule in the city. fuck Ja Rule that's what they would tell me the labels would tell us fuck these niggas in the hype so imagine what they'll do to your ass I mean, listen, hearing you say it, man, and you just being honest, like me getting to work with you, like, you know, I call Chris, it's like, yo, what's up with this, Chris? Yeah. And I have an idea. He's like, look, Bender, your percentage not going to be that big. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love you, but I know my work. But I'm like, no, nah, Chris, I'm not trying to take that from you. I'm just trying to explain it to you. He's like, don't explain nothing, Bender. You're getting less money than you think. But Chris is very direct about telling me. But that works. What the fuck I'm asking? Like, he don't duck the question. And, no. and listen, my, people always say that to me. They say, bro, if you tell a person up front what you want, niggas can't trip on that. You know That's what I'm saying? It's yes or no. Don't waste my time. Let's keep moving. That's it. For and sure. the part that most artists have trouble with. Um, they don't, they they, they want to stand behind their lawyer and their lawyer can't negotiate but so far. Here's why. I'm going to give you the lawyer, the flip side for the lawyer, why they, they're the enemy. Every the lawyer the one fucking them over. But listen why. Here's why. It's business. It's nothing personal. They have a roster of clients. So every lawyer has a roster of clients. Right? right. So when they go to that record label, they're dealing with that same CEO 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 times for all their roster. Sleepy, what up, bro? I'm listening. All of those rides that they're dealing with. So what do they think they're going to do for you if you're not the superstar? If you're the superstar, the lawyers is going to do what you need. When you're not the superstar, that's how you value your lawyer. What do they do for you when you're the fucking in the pack of all of these other artists? Because the label head is sitting there saying to the lawyer, you really want to fight for that extra money for this one when you're going to bring me this nigga next and this nigga next? And it's business, wow. the lawyer. It's business. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's why when I say I got Brian Robinson, he knows he can't represent other people but me. We took this from fucking Suge Knight. We Suge Knight had David Kenner, his only attorney. And mm -hmm. that's the reason Death Row is Death Row. Say what you want. They had great deals. Everything they was getting was great. Business-wise. Not talking about the way Suge ran it. 
Okay, so so the money that you gave out to producers, they didn't give out. They was it wasn't no fifty percent split on the on the production. Lance, what up? When you say that, what what do you mean? What I'm I'm just saying you're you're saying the way that the company ran as a whole, it was strong because of the deal structure that they had and the support of their attorneys. But do you think No, we paid everybody. They got their money. They wanted more. They thought if, I, if they everyone thought if they was paying you this, they have to be able to give you more. It's not my fault. I put them at the ceiling to start. Does that make sense? So they got the highest level to start. They I never changed and renegotiate the deal when they wanted renegotiation. I said this is nothing. All I can do is advance you money. But I'm taking that back. This recoupable. I'm recouping it. I can advance it to you, but I'm not this your jail structure is the same. And their lawyers would get upset, but I'm like, I'm not moving. Their lawyers know what's up. They know why I'm not moving. You want to rob me. That's not gonna happen. But they never seen someone do business like that. Right. Usually they start you at the fucking bottom, let you get popping, and then incrementally work your way up. And they never let you hit your ceiling. Mm -hmm. That's what typically happens. That's why you hear all of the artists and producers complain. Because they start with your entry level deal, and then you got to work it all the way to fuck up or break free from the person to get what you truly deserve. Right, exactly. I started you at the top, 50 50 with an Irv Gotti who's popping. Fuck out of here. You can never get what he gets. It's even. That's the best you could get. You cannot get more. So do you feel that all artists got to take some form of a shitty deal to get to the next level? If you're dealing with a label, of course, everybody starting has to take some type of... You're never going to get what you want starting out. Michael's dealing right now. I want to tie him in. He's on the line with us. Like, you're a director. Do you feel that way? You think you're going to get... Uh, you're going to get Scorsese type fucking deals or you're going to get your level deals, right? It's just what it is. Mike, what you got? Tell us what you're thinking, man. We listen. I number, but T-Mobile, we need sponsors nah, for Mike's Wi-Fi. This, this that Cricket Wireless, <laughs> but, um, uh, <laughs> um, they off Cricket, better yeah. than Cricket. <laughs> listen, I got, I, I, I got, I got, I think, you know, um, Irv and BT gave me a pretty fair deal, right? But the, the truth is you don't get the Issa Rae type of deal that she would get for doing a TV show, you know, because you, you and I understand that. Like so many people come to me like, oh, well, don't you get royalties? I'm like, that's not really how it works in this. In well, this, this is space. your first show, though. This is your first show on a major network. Right. And you and got you, five of them, five parts. Yeah. I negotiated mean, say it again. I said your first. This is your first one, though. Like, so I mean, I, I get what he's saying. You're not gonna get Scorsese's prices on your first run, but like, who negotiated you to get five parts? Like, how did it get to five parts? Well, that was baked into the to the creator from the beginning. Remember, I was I was on this project from the very 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 beginning. So it was always, uh, even when we were potentially going with another company, it was always going to be four or five parts. So that was actually that was actually my idea to make it. Uh, a four to five part series. So when we, by the time we brought it to BET, it was already understood that we was going to do five parts. And then how we, you know, how I got paid, they just broke it down yeah, per right episode. Up. But but yeah, I mean, my, you know, me and my lawyers negotiated that. Shout out to uh, to Colleen, my lawyer, for, for working that out. But no, I mean, listen, I think that, and and I've always been, um, I've always been a student of of Irv and Chris. I, I used to, I, I told Chris this, I told Irv this. Even before I ever met these guys, I was already studying every interview, every article, and I was learning the game, you know, because, again, I was coming from a music standpoint. And I remember in the interview, it was either I think Chris said it or Irv said it, one of them said, it's probably you, Chris, that, you know, you, you get in, you get in, you get that first deal. And that first deal is going to be, it's going to be shitty. Let's, let's keep it real. It's not going to be what you necessarily want it to be, but you got, you're good. You're on a team. You got a jersey. Go out there, make yourself hot, get hot. Make some mm -hmm. records, make some, you know, make the company money, come back with a match with your pay, with your contract and put a torch to that bitch and be like, yo, <laughs> sign a renegotiate. You know what I'm saying? So like that's, that's, and that's just, the, I mean, people got to understand if you're dealing with the label, if you're dealing with a company, you're, you're, um, I'm an unproven product up until, uh, up, up until Murder Ain't Died. Oh, uh, and the proof of concept. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've done independent projects. I've done 
uh, a shit ton of things on my own, right? But at this level of the game, I'm in the NBA now. I'm in the NFL. So I, I'm not going to – I might have been nice in high school. I might have been nice in college. But I got to prove myself when I get on that field and show that I can play with LeBron. I can play with Steph. You know what I mean? So – And it's so, funny get in that analogy of sports because, to me, it's the exact same. You, uh, LeBron James, you think he's getting the same type of deal he did when he first walked into the league? Hell, you yeah. Put the work, he put in the time. Now they know his value. You have to build yourself up so people know your value. And then once they do that, they have to compensate you accordingly. And it's up to you to accept what you accept or don't accept. Right? right? I can like certainly I people, say since the, since the murder ain't died, yesterday's price is not today's not, price. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Shout out to that, Joey Craig, man. And that was the coldest shit Fat Joe ever said. Like, it's yeah. just so true, though. It's so like it's just even the things that you get offered before you even negotiate. It's like you gonna give me right. that? Okay, like, let me before I even step in with my number. It's like okay, great. But but that's that's just the nature of the game. You got to go out there. You got to prove yourself, and that you can't go in there acting like you like you already a star when you're not. Like I'm sorry, you 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 can be and you can be hot. You can come in, into the game hot right. with it. But it come, still doesn't matter. You still have to prove yourself. Like, can you put numbers on the board? Can you yeah. post up numbers? It's quality of work. Everything comes to play. 100%. You know, it, it's a business. Did you come yeah. in on budget? Was you fucking over budget? All of those things is going to be part of your, your history. Can you people? Can, can, can you play? Do you get along well with your teammates? You know yes. what I mean? <laughs> like, like, little shit like that. Like, can, can you play with others? Like, it's one thing to be... Uh, again, I love the basketball the sports analogy. You know, rap game and the film game and the sports game. It's 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 all the same thing. How can you be valuable to the team? It's not about you and a, even if you are artist, even if you are Ja Rule at the top of the game, it's still it's a team. Like you you are working to make sure that that, that marketing is or getting that plaque on the wall at the end of the day. So I have a question for you. So what's next for you? Like you did the murder ink doc. You know, you got five parts of that. Are you working on a currently working on another project, a doc, a film project? Are you working on tales? What you what you got coming? We got a lot of things in the works, man. Uh, I don't, I don't like to announce things before there is ink to pen, um, but 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 it's a lot of things going on. We and, and it's it's looking it's it's looking great. Like uh, like we uh, Chris and I have been discussing a few projects that we got in the pipeline. Irv. Uh, of course, we're working on some stuff. I, it's a lot of things coming down the pipeline. But let's just say there's going to be more dope um, hip-hop content. It's going to be some content that maybe you wouldn't even expect to come from the guy who directed the murdering doc. But it's going to be a see I'm Dope, dope, dope. So listen. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I want to let you know, bro, whatever you do, I think my, my film debut, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right? I know Chris, y'all know the same people. It's no need for you to get to act in Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? I'm a <laughs> hey, well, tell your people to call so, my people my and, we... and I have my agent call you and shit. I don't want <laughs> nah. to give them money. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need that. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, it's all love, man. It's all love. It's all about I, now, teach here, one, teach my, one. My day is coming soon. When I think about Murder Inc. in my head and just reliving some of these moments because seeing it now. And it's like you wouldn't even realize that twenty years passed. I would love to see a murder ink reunion, a murder ink reunion. Um, you know, I don't even have to see Herb and Ashanti patch it up. I just would like to see them work together for the brands. Because to say, man, you stronger when you throw at him. And I mean, man, it's like he said, everybody knows she's murder ink. So me as a fan, like I would like to see it. I would like to see younger artists come from murder ink or add ventures and under those brands. And then I want to see Irv do something crazy with the visionary ideas. We know you got that money, Irv. You got that money. You sold a map. You need to give some of that money to the community, Irv. And when I say community, I'm mainly talking about myself. <laughs> and just let me know. If Chris got my number, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. might come pull up and do an interview. Let me know. I'm here for all of that. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I, I, I'll say this. Uh, I'll say this, Ben. I think the way that that one of the big ways that that Herb and Chris give back with the resources that they got, you, you can, you know, and Chris, I know you appreciate this. You can you can uh, give a man fish for a day and he'll eat, right? He'll eat for a day, but you can take him to. But if you teach him how to how to fish, he'll eat forever. Right. 
And one thing that 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 Chris and Herb are so good at is giving, truly giving back. And like 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 look look at the fact that Herb and Chris put me in this position to do this doc when right. I was somebody just off of YouTube and Instagram. You know what I mean? But gave me a platform that that, so that now I'm creating jobs for other people. You know what I'm saying? They create a job for me, and I'm now creating jobs for other people. Chris, you look at Chris's team. Everybody is people that he's just putting. No, he's he's putting people on 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 a daily basis. Like, hey, oh, you can do camera. Oh, cool, you do that. Oh, you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, so so sometimes things don't have to be just monetary. It can be just in the fact that they using their resource and their platform to put people on in the community. That's something that that's just worth more than money to me. I was just telling my team I wanted to do some podcasting work, right? And I did the first interview with Chris, and but it wasn't a Q and A. The Q and A, ladies and gentlemen, I got to get credit to Chris. All this shit was Chris's idea. It was not my idea. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So then, like, automatically, like, Chris just slipped right back into Murder, Inc., and he stopped bossing me around. The day we were supposed to do the interview at fucking 8 o'clock, you know what I'm saying? And Chris called me and said, yo, we're going to do this shit at 4 o'clock. I'm like, Chris, I don't have something to do. He's like, look, cancel what you got to do. I'm getting Michael on here. We're doing the interview. Like, <laughs> we make happen. See that? going on before you hey, start doing perfect example, though, Linda. <laughs> Asked me about Murder Inc. It wasn't like we said I didn't go to school. <laughs> but what I go to is I know how, I'm gonna make it happen. Hook or crook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The job for Irv was he needs some. I'm gonna go get it. For I sure. right. so. with bro from the very beginning, and all I did was empower him with anything I can help him with. Mm -hmm. And I made and I also made sure no one fucking interrupted his thinking. That to me is the most valuable part of what I did. Niggas could not talk to Irv unless it was cool. Because <laughs> I wanted the Gucci Lake to be disrailed and think about other things. I needed him. I needed him like this. He's the one I needed like this. He would tell me this, but I needed him like that. Mm -hmm. They focus, and I can sit here and I, I can make I can make statements when he didn't when he wasn't like this when shit went a little off. That's crazy. Now, listen, everybody, y'all listening. If you just not tuning in, because I see the flashes flashing, you tune into the Murder Inc. Story QA episode three. I got Chris Gotti. I got the director <laughs> here, Michael. Shout out. They're working on more projects. They got the Murder Inc. doc, but they also got Tales on BET as well. Uh, a great, great series. All for Ben the World. Yeah. You know, Made in America coming. And uh, man, make sure you share that. Make sure you share in this live stream. The button is there for you to just share with other people so they can watch it on their way home from work. Uh, Mike's on the West Coast. We all on different time zones. You can hit the share. You can hit the share button, or you could purchase a badge. Listen, if you want advertising, if you want us to shop you out in your business or your brand, you can DM me for that information. Right? I got the flyer. You can send me a direct DM if you want to sponsor the show. You have sponsorship opportunities, and it's real. Like, yo, I've got the biggest traction I ever got from live streams being on with Chris, and this shit go from here to to TikTok to YouTube to everywhere. So that that's gonna live. Like, yo, at the end of the day, you want people to hear your name. You want people to recognize who you are. But you're not going to get free. You know what I'm saying? Like, Chris, he was like, yo, my time costs. Everybody's time costs. So yeah. I want you to be mindful of that. I want you to take notes. You know what I'm saying? If you hear something that you want to know about, if you want to reach out and do with them, like I said, if you're an artist, Adventures is the way to go. It's this digital oh. distribution platform. And it's a big opportunity. Because and we're about to do a tour. 25 cities, we're going to be in a city near you, bringing all this shit right to you, live and in person. And, and and you know what? I got on the phone with Chris. We did a conference call a couple of days ago. There's a major artist out of Chicago. I won't say who the artist is. And the, they were like, they were like, I was like, yo, Chris would be perfect for this. But, you know, you just got to realize everything, you get to a certain point and you hit a ceiling. And Chris is like, yo, people get to a certain point. They need that help. And I just want to be, you know, even if I don't make a dime from you guys watching the live stream right now, if you go to Chris and you get your music out and you're able to distribute your shit and get in places and platforms or license and sync, man, I just hope that I help somebody. Like, it's really, like, yo, don't get it fucked up. I'm like Irv Gotti when it comes to making money. I love making money. <laughs> but also, I'm just trying to 
help. You know what I'm saying? But don't make me regret this shit. Like a lot of times, have you, so so personally, either one of you guys, have you regretted helping people? Like, <laughs> doing you, know, you know, that's a great question because I get that all the time, right? And they say, do I regret like helping people that I helped? And I, I, I sit there and I tell them no, because it's pure. And that means if I didn't help you, it would be like I'm trying to stop you, and that's negative, positive. Right. I don't want to do nothing negative. I only do one of two positive. And then, yes, I help the guy that brought the trial with together, the guy named Darnell Nichols. He's under witness protection right now. Everyone talks about Prem. It was Darnell Nichols, who was homeless, who I and put him with me, had him making money, crazy money, and then he went and told the story because he got caught with um, – the Skytail pages and the feds was locking his ass up. So he gave him this Murder Inc. story, which they bought hook, line, and sinker. And this is a nigga that was homeless that I, and I still would do it today if, if the same wow. scenario came about because it was from the real place. It was pure. Yeah. You know, I would do everything I did with Preem because it's pure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was me. Yeah. Nah, no go. I would no. be like all homeless people away from the office and <laughs> I would have security. I would be cleaning well, niggas up. Makes me, you feel me? Because I don't see, I can't, you know, it's probably why we won. Because God ain't going to let something happen to someone that's only being a soldier for these people. Facts. No, nah, I mean, for me, I've never, I can't say I ever would regret helping somebody because to me, service service is in my DNA. You know, yeah. like, I, I'm not here to be, it's not right. about for my vainglory. It's about how can I be of service to somebody else? How can I take the platform? You know, J Jay says it in his in in uh and God did. He said he said they done fucked around and gave the right niggas wealth. You know what I mean? Meaning that they that that that, that the right people got the resources now and we're gonna do the right thing with it. So you give me the ball, you give me the resources, I'm gonna always be be there to help you now. What you do with it, what you do with that, what you how you you know, how you use or abuse our relationship is that's totally on you. It's never gonna stop me from being who I am. You can you can uh, stab me in the back a hundred times. I'm going to keep turning back around over and over again because that's what you – I wouldn't be here were it not for somebody giving me an opportunity. And not right. just from the murdering dog, but from, from way back – every step of my life has somebody been giving me a, a hand up, not a hand out. So I'm all about giving people a hand up and, you know, not necessarily, again, um, giving people fish for a day, but teaching them how to fish and giving them the resources and the knowledge and the game to move that's forward. Okay. But please don't, you know, just don't don't take advantage of it because you do at your own behest. You do, you will regret. You will be the one that regrets, Thanks. you know, fucking gonna, me over, not like, vice versa. <laughs> over here with me, if you want, you can try to get fancy with me if you want to. That shit gonna fly. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, you know, they, 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 he's on the Chicago you. pimp shit, Mike. That's all it is. He's on the Chicago pimp. <laughs> <laughs> not, y'all know it. Hey, listen, I'm from, the, I'm from Oak Towns. You know, we already know how I get down. <laughs> somebody, put a link, somebody put a link to their music in the in the comments, right? And I'm watching all the comments. Y'all might keep seeing me squint, but we can't touch it. We can't watch it. But what would be the better thing for you to do is buy the live mention so I can shout you out with Chris in front of everybody so they know who the fuck you are. Because I'm not going to say the name. You know what I'm saying? But I see the links in there. But, like, yo, and that's another thing. Like, yo, it's nothing wrong with correcting somebody. I'm not shitting on you. It's yeah. all up. Like, at least give us something that we can entertain it. Even right. if you add a live mention, you get the conversation. I got to talk to Chris about this shit. So you get to get both of us to listen to you at, at, at a certain cost. Right, right. For a, it <laughs> might be a minimal amount of time. But, like, you got to think about it. I just don't want you to waste putting the link in there and we can do shit with that. You know what I'm saying? But this, I, I, I want to I wanna address that. I want to address that because I get uh, right now what's been happening since this murder rate dog is I'm getting Your so inbox many been people. fucked up lately. Oh man, everybody's sending me links <laughs> to music, to transcripts, and everybody says that, that they're the next thing. Like, let me tell you something. That, that I don't want to say it doesn't work because I don't want to sound like a, you know, a hater or nothing like that, but right. you got to do, the. Like, just back to what I said earlier, you got to do the work, man. Like, simply putting Stuff and people like, yo, there's a billion rappers. Like, literally, there's like a billion rappers, like, yeah. <laughs> and singers and creatives out there. How are you sure. gonna make yourself stand out? Do the damn work. Like, go out there and do the work. Make me pay attention to you. 
like I didn't, I didn't go knocking at Chris or Irv's door and say, hey, I, I know how to make film. Can you guys please let me do the – I just made the doc, put it out there. They sure. they came to me. I didn't have to knock on their door. You know, hey, I didn't have to knock on their – you know what I mean? What, what you, you did Chris? is – Understand, and that's one of the things you have to understand. When we're in different places, we have to understand things we take. Look, I just said I would never, I would do everything the same. Bender was like, hell no. He would tell every all them niggas stay away from me. You look what you're saying. You did the work. It's the same thing. We're we're not we're not regular. Like mo we're we're part of a very small population that would do the things you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's the reason you're in your position. It's the reason I'm in my position. What's up, man? Things. This is what changes our lives, and is, and then we're trying to pass it on. But the reality is, they don't do it. Yeah. They don't understand, and it's like, but really, this is all it takes. I didn't know anything. I just worked my ass off. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Work, look, work hard. Learning. Listen, everybody's learning, man. You know what I mean? But but, but work. I'm learning and, at a different and, 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 level. You know, I got executives teaching me, but it's like. The teaching, Chris, that's one thing that I really appreciate you for, the teaching. Like, if I had the opportunity, I would want to be in the studio with Herb, and I would want to be in the office with Chris. Because Chris gets shit done. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, not to say that Herb don't. They're just two different kind of guys. But nobody, I think a lot of people don't take their business as serious as their talent. But if you don't no. apply the business to your talent, it ain't going to do shit. You need no. both. And even if you don't understand both, you need the person that understands both. You know what, what I mean? people what people don't understand today is that you got to do your research. You got to do your homework, man. You got to study this game. I studied this game. I, I'll tell anybody, at least for my generation, I'm 31 years old. Nobody knows hip hop. Nobody knows the culture. Nobody knows this content game better than me. That's just my my ego and shit talking. But that's just how much I've studied this shit since I was 10, 11 years old. All I've ever done was study this. You know what I'm saying? So now you can't tell me nothing about how to, even when I'm talking to BET or these executives at these big companies, like, you don't you don't know this culture better than I do. You don't know this game better than I do. You know, but I can say that with that kind of confidence and, and because I've studied the game. So many people don't want to do the work of doing it. The, they just want to get lucky. And, oh, I sent my song to, to Michael Payton or to Chris, to Chris or to Ben, and I, I, I got on. That's not how that shit works, fam. It's just Somebody not how it works. You got to put in the work. The right time or the right place. Yeah. Listen, the only thing that can happen at the right time or the right place is you get shot. Like, yo, this is different. <laughs> you know? and, 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 and study. That's no bullshit. I've had this for years. Yeah. Since we started working on this shit, I sent this nigga like 70, 80 messages. I'm talking about flyers, proposals, this, that. Chris, how much shit do I send you, bro? You get shit for me every day almost. He was sending me mad shit, but again, I told him what the, what see there's two parts, right? It's timing. So remember, what people say you get lucky is because you're in the right place, right time, you're mm -hmm. prepared. So when you sending it, I might be seeing it, but I'm not in that zone because I'm doing so many other things. Mm -hmm. It's not about your time when you asking somebody for something. It's they time. And that's what most people forgetting, and they think niggas is fronting on them, and they don't realize I got likes to keep on too, my nigga. I got yeah. eating. I got a lot of responsibility to just stop what I'm doing to do what you want. It's not a realistic move unless it's the right time for me to be able to do that. Right. And it's a bandwidth. How many people can you help at once? You know. There's a reason they tell you when the plane's going down, put your mask on first. First. <laughs> then you're alive. Right. They tell you save yourself. Right. I can't oh, tell first. nobody that I'm good. Right. And that's the reality of this life lesson. Like when you're talking, but people don't ask. He someone just was asking on the grant, like now with comments saying, how do you know he got the work and how do you get someone to open up the budget? Timing. Budget for what though? He's saying they got the work. I'm just saying it's timing. Someone's gonna open up a budget. It's timing. They need you at that time. You need right. them. You need the budget. Right. If you figure out your own money, if you got the money, you need nobody for a budget. But when you need somebody, you have to work on their time and in their relevancy of what they're hearing from your music. And that's if another it, thing too. That's it, another thing too, Chris. And but like, you have to make yourself an asset. Like, be people have to want you and have to need you. Like. Not, oh, yeah. can you do something for me? Put me on. No, no. How yeah. can I come to you and help you build your brand? How can I help you build your company and what right. you're doing, Chris? How, you know what? I want to be, be the flagship artist of fucking Adventures Music. 
help hey. me help you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, hey. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, hey, hey, Mike, they all come with that, too. And I, you know my response is? <laughs> Save yourself. I'm all right. Right, right, you right, know, right. I'm, I mean, if you really like that, we'll figure it out, and it'll make sense. You don't have to sell me. Right. See, one thing is, like, in music, it speaks. I don't need you to sell me. Every time you play a hot record, you go into a strange room and you play your record and Nick jump up and start fucking with it, you know you got something. You don't need no one to tell you if you got it. Now, you play that same record and niggas is not paying attention, maybe right. you better get back into the studio and make another record. Because music speaks to people. Facts. Facts. It's like, I'm yeah. not no rocket science, but I can hear the difference in records and I understand that shit. Mm -hmm. And I try to explain to these artists, like, you can't sell me on a record that I ain't feeling. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm just, again, I just, it's just my opinion. I don't pick records that worked and I don't pick records that didn't work. So why do you want my opinion? Force my hand. You right. understand? Force my hand. Do the work on your end and it's going to force my hand and say, damn, I got to fucking try this shit. Right. And, then, and then, again, I just go back to my th main thing. I'm going to be beating this drum over and over. Do the fucking work, man. I can't tell me talented people I know in a multitude of spaces, music, film, all yeah. kind of different things that the they work. just they they just don't want to work. I, I know guys who sitting up here playing video games or want to want to chase women all day or smoke weed or do like yeah. you got like it's nothing wrong with having your you know doing your recreational thing, but you got to put the time in. The reason why Drake is Drake is that Drake is in the studio all the time. Future. Right. Thug when he was out, you know, free free slime. But you know what I mean? Like put like they they are putting that work in all the time. It's not no oh, I'm just, I'm, you know what I mean? With, so. Hold on. Not only are they putting that work with the best of the best in the game, mm -hmm. how are you gonna beat them? Right. Facts. How are you gonna outwork them? How? That's the level of challenge you at. And don't complain when you ain't willing to put the work in. Facts. Everyone wants the freebie. I ain't gonna shit free. <laughs> I work my ass off for everything. So I, when the people come up to me with the that part, I'm like, "What? I didn't get nothing." Yo. <laughs> oh man, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten on on set. You know, because when you a young black director, you're dealing. You know, first of all, that doesn't really happen too often in the, in the, in this space at a network, you know, corporate level, right? So there's there's a lot of people who don't feel you should be in the position that you in. How right. did you get? How did you get there? I've been working ten years and as a gaffer, and how the fuck you know? It's like, mm -hmm. yo, fam, like get, believe you. It may look like I just like got handed something, fam. I've, I've been putting in the work. Like all you see is the result, but you like like you don't see the thousand hours, the ten thousand hours I've been putting in. The, like we were saying earlier, I had to get had to be ready for this moment. Everything I did before this made me ready for this moment. So. When you get to that opportunity, if you're an artist out there and, and you you finally got Chris's ear, you finally got the some somebody who can actually do something, man, you better be ready for that moment. I was ready when Irv called me and Bender, you know my story. You know, how, my, my mom had just passed away. I was down and out. I thought my life was over. Irv called me the same day I buried my mom. You know what I'm saying? But even through all the pain and grief, I could have been like, I could have been whatever. I could have used that as an excuse to fuck off. Capacity. That's what you could have said. Yeah, I can be like, no, nah, man, I'm not right. No, nah, I, I like right. I said, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing? All right, thank you, mom. Thank you, God. I'm locked in. I'm here now. I'm not going to let, because I want this more than I want anything. I want this, I want the the the, the career and the things I'm building more than I want anything, more than I want uh, some girls, more than I want some to get high, more than I want some some right. regular pleasure just right now. Nah, I want this more than so You got to want that so hard that, Nothing. I don't care if, if, if God forbid, you do lose a loved one. If you do meet some kind of adversity, you got to be ready for that moment right there. No excuses, man. No excuses. I, and I feel, I, I, what you're saying resonates with me, man. I've been chilling on the ladies. I've been doing my push-ups. I've been doing my fucking research. I've been tapping into my connects. I'm like, yeah. what can I do for my brand? Because at the end of the day, you know, nobody lives forever. But you got to understand. If you go, if it's like, I don't know, it was it Steve Harvey or somebody was saying, if you die, bro, the last thing that you want at your deathbed is all of the dreams that you didn't fulfill. Yeah, facts. You know? Facts. Yo, the women, they're going to be there. So, ladies, y'all keep y'all keep applying that pressure. I might not be 
fresh up. You know what I'm saying? They, they'll be there or they won't be there. But the, the truth is, you know. I'm get, 55. They not going nowhere, man. Listen, get get hot. All you got to do is get hot, <laughs> man. You get hot, they gonna be they gonna be there. Ladies. You know what I'm saying? Like, for, for, forget like forget all that, man. I I went years. I'm like, yo, I'm not I'm not getting no relationship. I'm not doing nothing. I'm I'm locking in on this on this on these dreams, and that's it. Smash have the girls in the industry. Ain't shit left for us. We <laughs> might as well get to work because they told they clean shit up, man. Back <laughs> <to> early, <laughs> L.A. parties. I'm not guys really let their hair down. I'm not doing that, Ben. I don't kiss and tell. No, sir. I have, I have great relationships with all my lady friends. You heard me? Hey, no, that's I'm a very really faithful funny. man. I got one last question, man. Yes, Two, sir. Why you never? Why did y'all never think of signing Lil Mo and like Charlie Baltimore? Like, what? What happened? Like, I just feel like with Charlie Baltimore, Baltimore never got to shine. Like, and I don't Char think it was intentional, but I think Charlie Baltimore was dope. I just Charlie said. It. But Charlie, I'll take Charlie first. Charlie was on deck, album ready, on number one record, and then she didn't want the record her pick. That's the but, truth. But Charlie? Charlie was ready to go. Irv was ready to put the money and bag behind it, the marketing and everything, and she didn't like the record she had to go out. She got the whole fee. Let me say this. this I got to say this, Chris. Most artists, and I hear this from a lot of SX, the record that you don't like usually be the fucking record for you, right? The record that you don't like is the record. So don't be bringing me this bullshit trying to tell me what you think because it's not about what you think. It's about what people think. You know what I'm saying? So hey. Herb, listen, listen to what he just said. We were going to release the budget and the project, but that, the artist said no because they didn't like the song. But you don't Herb, think about that for Okay, me. here's I'm going to tell you more about Herb. Irv wants you to give him full belief. Mm -hmm. Everyone that gives Irv full belief, he won with. Mm -hmm. Right. The minute you question his decision making, he's looking at you like, "What?" And it and it, it disrupts the it disrupts the chemistry. Right. Yep. And right. That, Irv, when he seen that, he was like, "She ain't ready." Mm -hmm. And, and it's a, he, I think it's a, a that's that window, painful though. That's hey, painful. to open up that window, the to light open up painful. that window. Bender, to open up that window, the number one record, and you're getting exposed to hundreds of millions of people in, in with audience from the record you're on. Video spinning like crazy. To do that again is like the biggest blessing. It's like you can't take that for granted. You have to strike and be ready when that moment is there. That's when those favors come for radio, which is basically a, a different form of payola, really, when all it is. Allegedly. Allegedly, <laughs> fingers allegedly. But, but now look, bro. How to make a move? Huh? I, I just hit my next interview. Tell him I'm running late. Okay, for sure, for sure. I mean, man, it. I think I got all of my questions answered, Michael. Man, it was a, a blessing to meet you and actually see you face to face, man. I pray and I uh, hope that you do great things. You've already took the initiative, man. It, it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying, Chris. You Michael. know. Man, it's it's been real, man. I just can't I can't wait to see where this goes. Like, I first even took a clip of Chris saying, "Man, I know how to pick talent. I ain't gonna let that slip away." So, yeah. doing these interviews with me, you know, he sees something, and I just want to see where that goes, man. So I'm here. We working. Y'all make sure y'all follow Chris Gotti. Y'all make sure y'all follow Michael Payton, and um, y'all know. Y'all will be able to watch it when I throw it up. So, man, it's, it's love, man. Appreciate yeah, I, I, I just want to thank both of you brothers for having me on. appreciate y'all for reaching out yeah. um, and, and, and let me share this my story and my experience with making this doc. And uh, love what y'all doing, man. Love what y'all doing with this with this, with this Q&A. You good? I was just talking with Little Mo. He asked me about Little Mo. I answered to Charlie. But Little Mo had other, you know, there was a time when she was, she again, fame and everything, success. She was with, a, I believe, Electric Records at the time when we blessed her with this I record so. and blew her up and put her on this record. And then she got into her own bag, basically. And it, it, that was the end of that. Mm. And I fuck with Mo, you know what I'm saying? But she definitely got in her own little bag thinking it was more than that. Right. You know, she started getting it. I wrote this. And yeah, we didn't say you didn't. God damn. We're like, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, she there was a time about her going. Shout out, you know, love. But that's what people go through because you know this moment, that moment in time, you feel this is it, man. You ready to do anything for that shit? 
you, well, I you, mean, I just, hey, I, you might sell your mama. <laughs> <laughs> I just say this, man. It, listen, artists, though, you don't want to be so pressed about that moment that you turn people off that can actually help, right? Because yeah. relationships, I'm only here, my title is Mr. Relationships. The only reason that I'm here, we on this live, is Thank because you, Jimmy. of my fucking relationships, yo. So never think that your talent is more than your relationships. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But you're not. Good, man. Again, uh, Michael, I wanted to thank you for uh, being on, man. Great. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to try and get Ja on for the next one. I, oh, I shouldn't have said nothing. That would be the surprise. Shit. You know what I mean? Never, 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 That's hot. We ja, keep... come on, man. He going to do it. It's just he's touring. The nigga's busy as fuck. Yeah. But I will figure out a day he's free and I'll get him. <laughs> right. He, he owes you some favors. <laughs> yeah. He's not getting that up. Listen to me. No one owes me nothing. Don't do that, Bender. Don't put me in these. <laughs> I'm talking shit, man. You know. I know. I know. He owes I'm me. Shit. Hey, he owes me favors. I'm just saying, don't put me in that position. 